What's going on guys, NV Astro here, back at it with another video, and today I'm here with the one and only Mr. Sed Hendo. So today we have a video for you guys that is gonna be pretty big. This topic has been pretty big. It's gonna be a heavy versus light quad. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so just for anybody that's curious about the dry weight and battery weight, I'll go ahead and put some screenshots on the screen for you guys with the Tokyo with the battery and without the battery, and then for the Hyperfloss as well with battery and without a battery. And keep in mind, the Hyperfloss, we run it with a 1300 and the Tokyo, we run it with a 1500. And the reason behind that is because the 1300 on a super light build could get us more than enough time for us to finish the track versus a 1500 barely gets us through those two minutes of uh, racing. So that's the reason we have the variable of a batteries. With that, let's go ahead and talk about the findings and tests and overall numbers that we found. Finally finished with all our tests. We're out here actually at a parking lot because it got dark on us as you can tell. But I'm gonna show you guys some numbers and I want you guys to guess which numbers correspond to which frame. I'll go ahead and put them up on the screen for you guys and comment down below which one it is and I'll let you guys answer them. Okay, so if you guys chose the one that's about 26 seconds, that is the Tokyo SX, believe it or not. That's the heavy quad and the one that's averaging about 28, 29, that is the flaws. It is, it's the truth. It's the way it is. The and it keep in out. mind, these numbers were taken once I was pretty much fully warmed up. I felt good on the stage. You could ask this guy, I'll show you guys some DVR. I was on it, dude, I was getting it. I felt real warmed up. And I mean, the, the tune and setup are pretty much something that I'm uh, familiar with on his uh, setup, because he pretty much runs the same race as I do. But dude, I was very surprised with this. I was too. Um, I was really thinking that the floss was gonna be so much faster. Like, yeah. But it was quicker. It was smoother on the turns. You were handling that a little bit smoother on the turns. Yes, for sure. And it was very quick. But it does not have as much top end as the as F40s, F40s dude. pros, baby. It just, just baby. doesn't, Yo. dude. And one thing, there no, another thing though, even though it's a lot lighter, this is what, about 165 grams lighter? Yeah. It just doesn't have that torque, man. It doesn't. You know? Now, I am rocking the, the 3022 kV motors. Um, that might be a little too high. Uh -huh. uh, we were spinning 50-50 uh, tubes, um, which is a pretty heavy prop, really. Um, I normally probably would have tested it on, you know, 50-40s or something like that. That's what I, I like those. And yeah. they're a very light prop for that motor. But, I still don't think it would have kept up. I and, mean, and, F40 Pros are just hardcore. And since you are on the topic of um, KVs, uh, we did the, I did the test on the 20, what was it, 27-22s, mm -hmm. but they just weren't as efficient as those were. Uh, we were getting about three minutes on his runs on a 1300, and I was getting two and a half minutes. So, but so efficiency was a little bit better on the on the lighter build. Yeah. But it wasn't just faster, dude. It just, in all honesty, the the, the way I see the difference is. Uh, he was looking at my sticks and he was telling me that around the track I was about at about 50 to 70 percent throttle with the flaws and I was pretty much getting it You know, yeah, yeah and open I was opening throttle on the straightaways and the only difference between that and the Tokyo is the Tokyo I would have to compensate in the sense of me being on that top and more, you know yeah. So around a turn instead of being yeah, like on 70% like I was at actually 100% 100 percent sometimes to stay yeah. tight around that yeah. corner so but after about 60%, maybe even 70% throttle on the floss, there wasn't anything else there. No, there wasn't. It was like just kind of top it out. Even if you out. just hung it out and just threw the you throttle all it, yeah. the way and just left it there, it, it didn't go anywhere. It didn't have that extra gear like the F40s yeah. do. It's something about, I don't know if it's the F40s. I don't know if it's just heavy versus light. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you that for sure, as the time showed, the Tokyo was still faster even though it was a flop. It was a lot lighter with the flaws yeah, yeah, and that pretty much surprised me and we also did a drag race we, we did the drag race and the flaws did not and the flaws did didn't land. do it uh you would expect the flaws to actually get off the line a lot quicker but it didn't it did uh because he would see me right in front of him uh him uh, right off the takeoff and then at the very end he would also see me as well the only thing i, I think he probably had an advantage was that that turn the turn uh gave it a little bit better it but did. then the f40s compensated with that torque they just keep that line around it full throttle because of the torque man that's right it, you you really can't 
you wouldn't be able to have a heavy frame, a heavy quad without a torquey motor. You can't, you, can. you can't I think do the it. F40 is the way to go. If you want like something to be heavy, yet it has the same characteristics as a light quad, mm -hmm. I think that motor may be one of the Now there might ones. be some, there might be or the e a blend. There might be a blend that we could do. Uh, like I did have the 2600 uh, F40 Pros on on a floss frame that we ran hey, but that's another the 6S video. on. That's another video. That though. is another video. But we probably should have drag raced with that to see if with there was that. any difference I because it is still lighter. And the way we wanted to do it is heavy versus light this way because a lot of people run the F40 Pros. A lot of people run full size uh, 2206s, 2306 motors and that's pretty much the best way we could po possibly test uh, heavy versus light. So here's, here's the thing. This is what I've taken out of this whole thing, this whole experience is that you don't necessarily have to have a super light quad in order to compete. Um, you can still do it with what you're currently running. The difference is what you're currently running better have some torque to really get that heavy weight around the track. It's not going to be more efficient. You're still going to have the same efficiency that you have, but as far as speed, handling even, if you've tuned it properly and you got a good quad and it's it's pulling good numbers, then there's no denying that. Now, with this theory and the, uh, the floss frame and light, light motors and all of that, it flies fantastic. It, it really does. does. It turns really well. Uh, it doesn't float around corners to at, um, hardly at all, unless you got a big old fat pack on it. I was running 1300, just nothing fat about that. <laughs> and let me tell you, it, it's really fun to fly. It and is. it's actually a little easier to fly, actually. But the reality of it is, is this theory did not show through no, on this. It did. I the only thing the it did show was the efficiency. It, it, it did. It That's did. It. But as far as off the line, no, it didn't. F40s it did. won it. Well, Tokyo won it. As far as the Tokyo won it. Tokyo uh, as won far it. as the top end, Tokyo. It 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 didn't. Um, Tokyo won it. Tokyo won that. And I tell you what, um, all in all, I felt like. My Tokyo, his Tokyo, it didn't really matter. They were strong. They've always been strong. They've always been a great race platform. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't have something else in store that is along with some of the things that is important to do right now, which is, you know, let's get, let's get something a little bit lighter, a little bit more, you know, this or that. We got something coming, baby. That's so it. don't you worry about it. It's gonna be here. So with that, guys, I think we kind of debunked the dis all the disc theory type of thing, right? Yeah. I would agree with some things of the disc theory because it just makes yes, sense. Yes, it had efficiency, and it, I mean, of course, physics and the math and all of that yeah, behind absolutely. it. I don't really know absolutely. too much about it, but I know it makes sense. But in all honesty, like I told you guys before. I think it comes down to the pilot for sure. Like, can the pilot compensate? How well can he, uh, how quick can he compensate for the different torque, the different power, the different prop, things like that. And I'm kind of a pilot that kind of gets used to the things right away. So that may be a bit of the, that may be a big part of the, That's right. what we found today. And it takes me a little bit longer to get used to a setup and get it feeling like I want to and, and all exactly, of that good yes. stuff. But you nevertheless, we can still fly it. It'll still fly, it'll still race, it'll still do what we want it to do, ultimately. Yes. But, is there room for improvement? Always. Always, yes. I sure. would say, if I were gonna sum this all up, yes, you wanna use this theory for sure, use it, it yeah, makes sense. It. If you want to uh, get too into the numbers, too much into the weight thing, hey, uh, not, don't that sweat it, man. not that much. Don't sweat it not for sure, because I do know some people that try to get hung up on weight. Yeah. They're like, man, I'm trying to save weight here, I'm trying to save weight here. And I honestly think the way we flew today and the numbers that we found, honestly, like for example, we used the flaws. So the flaws could actually maybe add like 20 more grams, 30 more grams of protection. Like yeah. maybe make the arms a little thicker and I don't even think it would matter. It did, it, I don't think it would. I really don't think it would. When I switched from a 1300 to a 1500, just in regular flight, I couldn't even tell yeah. on the floss frame. I could not even tell. It felt identical. Yeah, and so, those are very, very different exactly. packs. Exactly. Weight wise, they're well, very like different. about 40 gram different, right? Yeah, if not a little bit more. Yeah, so for sure. So, yeah. my opinion, to me, this theory does, to some point and extent, help out. Yeah. But always try to keep your uh, quad light, but not too light. Don't get too hung up on weight because you could always compensate for it. And, and you I know mean, what? 
don't don't uh, lighten it up so much that you're sacrificing durability. Exactly. We are gonna crash today. We crashed an awful lot. We broke two two arms, right? Yeah, two arms. Two arms. Um, it it just is. Some things are just not worth it. Uh, sometimes you break an arm and you can rip out wires in the motor. Sometimes you'll break an arm and rip off a pad of the ESC. It's just not worth it. So yeah. just make sure whatever you're building, make it light, but also make it strong. Make it where it can last through all these crashes that you're exactly, going to do. Yes. It's just the way it's going to have to be. Otherwise, it's going to be trash before you know it. So, guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And let us know if you guys would like to see any other videos. Maybe if we did something wrong during this test, let us know. So with that, see you guys on the next video. Peace out.